be the Vobble Novice, here to learn how to securely store your Bitcoin seed. I am the Vobble Wizard, who can teach you how to generate unbiased random data using dice, perform a checksum on your generated seed, split your seed into separate shares, and recover your seed from those shares. A checksum is a small amount of redundant data used to detect errors. Using Codex 32, you can detect up to 8 errors and fix up to 4. That means that if your crypto steel or paper wallet is damaged and up to four characters are illegible, you can fix those symbols and still use your seed. The secret sharing scheme works by creating a Bitcoin seed that is split into pieces that can be used to recover your seed by combining them even if a few are lost. The more shares you split your seed into, the greater the risk that some of them will be stolen. However, the fewer shares you split your seed into, the greater the risk that all of them will be lost. Unlike schemes where you simply make copies of your full seed, if a thief steals a single share, it is worthless to them. Only if they steal as many shares as are needed for recovery can they steal your coins. You can split your seed into shares using a computer, but I tend to distrust computers. You cannot be certain there is no nefarious software lurking in their blinking bellies. Instead, I use these paper computers, dating at least as far back as the 11th century, called baubles. They were invented long before Bitcoin, so the likelihood that someone has tampered with them is low. You will be using a booklet that contains three baubles, several worksheets, and detailed instructions. You can download these freely, including PostScript source code, or purchase a full-color limited edition printed copy. Links are in the description. Contained in this booklet are all the instructions you need for this process. In the back are the addition bobble, translation bobble, and recovery bobble. To construct the baubles, you'll need this workbook, scissors, craft knife, and brass fasteners. This is the back page of the addition bobble. Cut it out. Cutting it out might be a bit tedious, so I recommend using magic. This is the front page of the addition bobble. Cut out all the squares on the addition bobble. This is the recovery bobble. This is the inside of the multiplication and translation bobble. This is the outside of the multiplication and translation bobble. To assemble the addition bobble, cut a small slit on the X sign on the top wheel. Do not cut through the entire X. The X is there to center your brass fastener. Cut a hole on the bottom wheel. Attach the two using a brass fastener. Now the two wheels rotate. Construct the recovery bobble in the same way by cutting a slit on the top bobble and a circle on the bottom and attach using a brass fastener. The translation and multiplication bobble have four layers. Cut a slit on the colored outside pieces and a hole on the mostly blank pieces. Assemble all four pieces with a brass fastener. Be sure you have the multiplication side matching with the multiplication side and the translation side matching with the translation side. Now that we've constructed the baubles, I'm sure you're excited to use them. Not so fast. Before we get to use these baubles, we need to generate some random data. First, before doing any computations, choose a threshold and total number of shares. The threshold is the number of shares that will be needed to recover your seed. I will use three shares with a threshold of two. That means I will generate my seed in three pieces, and I will need two of those pieces to recover it. If I had five shares with a threshold of three, that would mean I generate the seed in five pieces and would only need three of them to recover it. Once you've chosen your threshold, which we'll call K, take K copies of the checksum worksheet. Start filling them out by first writing in the share headers. The share header consists of your threshold K, which for us is two, 2, and 2, and a four-character seed ID. We're going to use TA, DA, or TADA. You can use any four characters you like, as long as they are consistent across all of your shares. T, A, D, A, T, A, D, A. Next, we add our share indices. For our initial shares, we must take the share indices from the outside of the addition bobble in order. The first one is A, then C. A, C. 
Every share starts with MS1, which identifies the shares as Codex 32 data and is not a part of the header. Now let's generate random data. Find the random character worksheet. You will need five dice and five markers. You may use two to 20 sided dice. D20s are easiest to work with because there is less of a chance of repeated numbers. You'll see why this is important in a minute. But it's perfectly fine to use six-sided dice, which is what most people have. All the dice need to be distinguishable from each other, such as being a different color. You should have a marker corresponding to each die. To start, place a marker on the free space of each row. Roll all five dice. Move the marker for each die to the number that you rolled. Roll all five dice again. Now move the dice to the number that you rolled. If you happen to roll the same number twice, move the marker back to the free space, roll again, Move the marker to the number you just rolled, roll again, and then move your die to the number on the die. Now look to the decision tree. Follow the branches according to the position of each die relative to its marker. If the die is to the right of its marker, go right. If it is to the left of its marker, go left. Follow each branch of the five die tracks. For instance, this roll sends us right, right, left, left, left right, right, left, 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 resulting in the character C. You have now generated one character. Repeat this 25 more times. Write each character in the checksum worksheet in the bolded boxes. Here is our checksum worksheet, so write the character C. This process allows you to debias the dice and be sure your data are completely random. If you shortcut this process, loaded or imperfect dice could compromise your data. You can't see it in the camera, but this die has a small air bubble in it. Most dice are cheaply manufactured and have small imperfections like this, which could lead to biased randomness if you were using this in a more direct way. Continue rolling dice and generating random data until all the non-pink bolded boxes in your checksum worksheet are filled in. Now that you have 26 characters filled out in the bolded boxes, you can begin filling in the rest of the worksheet. Let's work through an example together. Use the addition vowel to add the first two lines together. The first two characters we will be adding are 2 and 3. Move the arrow until it's pointing at the character 2. Now look to the 3 on the top vowel. You'll see that it points to the character M. Write the resulting M in the square beneath the 2 and the 3. The next characters we add are T and 3. Move the arrow to the character T. Look to the character 3 and see that the result is 6. Fill a 6 in in the next box in the row. Next we'll be adding A and X. Turn the arrow to A, look to the character X, and see that the result is M. D and W, add to R. Fill in the rest of the row this way. You see these two characters on the far left of the row we just added, M and 6? Find the M6 on the checksum lookup table. Look through the black columns until you find M6. When you see M6, observe the row next to it. Copy the M6 row onto the next line. Now, add these next two lines. First characters that we need to add are M and 6. Point the arrow to M, look to 6, and observe that the character is P. Next characters are R and J. Move the arrow to R, look to J, and observe that the character is 3. Fill out the rest of the row like this. Now, observe the two characters on the far left, P and 3, and go back to the lookup table. Find the characters P3 in the black columns, and find the row next to it. P3 row is V, K, D, J, E, W, W, G, 4, L, 0, A, D. Fill out the rest of the worksheet, excluding the pink boxes. This should take one to two hours. Now that you have filled out the checksum worksheet from the top, you will now work from the bottom. Fill in the shaded letters, secret share 32. 
You may notice that I put slashes through my S's to look like dollar signs. This is to differentiate them from other characters. I also put slashes through my Z's, 7's, and zeros. You can use whatever handwriting you like as long as it's distinguishable from other characters. Use the addition bobble to add the two bottommost lines and write the result in the square above. In this case, we will be adding S and L. Turn the arrow to S, observe L, and see that the result is zero. Write the zero above S and L. Next, we will be adding E to X, turn the arrow to E, observe the character X, and find that the result is L. Write that above the E and X. Fill in the rest of the line this way. Now, add the next two lines, 0 to D. Turn the arrow to 0, observe the character D, and see that it equals Z. Write that above the D and the 0. Fill in the rest of the pink shaded boxes this way. See these 13 pink shaded and bolded boxes? These are your share's checksum and are part of your share. Before moving on, use another checksum worksheet to verify the checksum that we just computed. You can skip this step at your peril, but the more work you do before discovering errors, the more work you will need to redo if any exist. To verify the share, copy all the characters from the bolded boxes, including the pink ones, onto a new worksheet. Then fill out the entire sheet. This time, rather than writing secret share 32 and back computing from there, we simply fill in the whole worksheet and confirm that the final lines work out to secret share 32. This magic value is your way of confirming that the checksum is properly computed. By periodically filling out these checksum worksheets, you can be assured of the long-term integrity of your shares without ever needing to touch an electronic computer. For now, filling out a second checksum worksheet simply assures us we haven't made any mistakes. Because we chose our threshold k to be 2, we need to generate two random shares. So we will generate another one in the same way that we generated the first. The second one will have share index C, the next character on the addition wheel. This is our C share, whose header we wrote earlier. Generate random data, do the checksum worksheet, and then backfill from the word secret share so that you have the pink shaded boxes filled in. Now using your randomly generated initial shares, you can derive as many additional shares as you want. Any two shares, or whatever your threshold is, will be sufficient to recover your Bitcoin seed. Our two initial shares were required to have indices A and C. For derived shares, we get to decide what letter we want the share to have. I will pick the W share for wizard. To generate this share, we'll first find the derivation table in our workbook. Find the symbols beneath the letter W on the table. They are percent and cent. This means that to generate the W share, we will be translating the A share by percent and the C share by cent. Take the translation worksheet for k equals 2. In the leftmost boxes, write what your shares are and what symbols you will be translating them by. I will write the character A in the first box and the percent symbol in the second box. Then, on the second row, write the character C in the first box and the cent symbol in the second box. In the remaining box on the left, write W, the index of our share. Now let's translate the A share. Turn to the potion side of the translation multiplication wheel and turn it to the percent symbol. Then flip it over. This wheel will do the translation for us. Go through the A share character by character. First, we will translate the character 2. 2 translates to 9. Always read the wheel from the inside to the outside. Notice how the arrows point from the inside ring to the outside ring. 2 translates to 9, but 9 translates to K. Write 9 in the first box in the row. The next character is T. T translates to 3. Write 3 in the next box in the row. Do this for each character in your share. Now we will do the same thing for share C. We are translating share C by cent, so turn the wheel to cent, Flip it over and translate as you did before. Observe that 2 now translates to 0, so write 0 in the first box. Do this for the rest of C share. Now that you have both shares translated, add them together using the addition bobble. When you add your translated A share and C share, the result will be your W share. 
add the first two boxes, which are 9 and 0. 9 and 0 adds to 2, so write 2 in the box beneath 9 and 0. Add 3 and 6 to get T. 6 and 8 equals A. J plus L equals D. And 6 plus 8 equals A again. You will see that, as if by magic, a pattern appears. The parts of the untranslated shares that are the same, TADA, will appear when you add the translations, followed by W. Let's see if 6 and 5 add to W. Sure enough, the next two numbers, 6 and 5, add to W, the name of your share index. Because A and C share are different after this point, the visible pattern ends. Add the rest of your translated characters. The result is your W share. You now have three shares, A, C, and W. Before moving on, complete a checksum worksheet to verify the W share. Repeat this process using your A and C shares to derive as many shares as you want. You may have noticed that the translation tables do not have an S column in them. This is because your S share is actually your seed. Generating this share is called recovery and should only be done when you want to actually use your seed. In order to do recovery, you need just two of your shares. Let's use A and W. Just as before, we are going to translate and add. To find the translation symbols, this time you need to use the recovery bobble. Find the symbol for the A share, turn the recovery wheel to A. Then look to the symbol pointed to by W, gamma. Like before, write this down on a K2 translation worksheet. For instance, A, is translated by gamma, so write A in the first box and gamma in the second. Now turn the recovery bobble to W and find the symbol pointed to by A. Delta. Write W and delta down on the next line of your recovery worksheet. Finally, write an S on the remaining box on the left. Then fill out the rest of the first line by translating A as you did when deriving shares. Do the same for the W share. Now use the addition bobble to add the two rows together. For instance, we add P plus T. P plus T equals 2. Write 2 in the first box. Continue for the rest of the row. When you have added your entire share, you now have your S share. This is your recovered secret seed. Be sure to fill out a checksum worksheet to verify that you've recovered it correctly. Finally, Remember that any data on the checksum or translation worksheets are secret data that could cause the loss of funds if they are leaked. Always securely destroy these worksheets, such as by fire, once you are done with them. Congratulations! You have learned how to generate shares, checksum them, derive more, and recover your secret seed. Go forth! And remember, keep it secret. Keep it safe.